The first generation 4 series was essentially a three door three series and that was fine except you couldn't escape the feeling that you were paying more for ultimately less car. But things are very different now. It's still based on the same underpinnings as the 3 Series, but there are a number of key differences, starting with the looks. Now, let's get this over with. We're not going to tell you that it's beautiful or that it's ugly. It's for you to decide. So go to the comment section below, and at the top, we've pinned one there. Very simply, if you like how it looks, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't, then give it a thumbs down. But aside from this alarming makeover, what else is different with the 4 Series compared to the 3 Series? The distance between the rear wheels is 23mm wider. On standard suspension, it rides 10mm lower than a 3 Series. And that suspension has been retuned and the chassis has been stiffened, all of which should make the 4 Series feel even more agile and capable through the corners than the 3 Series. It also has different rivals to the 3 Series. So while that car is against the Audi A4 and the Mercedes C-Class, the 4 Series is up against the A5 and the C-Class Coupe. A more heavily angled windscreen and lower mounting of the front seats gives it a slightly sportier feel behind the wheel compared to the 3 Series. And while the 3 Series is a five-seater, you'd only fit four in here. Slightly less divisive than the front grille, but still another nice design feature you'll see on the 4 Series, but you won't see on a 3 Series, are these frameless windows. And you might also notice that the feature line down the side of this car is lower than it is on the 3 Series. And also at the back, you've got a bulge over this rear wheel, which again, you don't see on a 3 Series. There will also be a few more different body styles with the 4 Series too. You can buy a 3 Series saloon or estate, but you can buy this 4 Series coupe, a four-door grand coupe, or a drop-top cabriolet. Plus, that grand coupe version will form the basis of the new electric saloon, the i4. But what's the 4 Series coupe like, and which is the best version for you? Let's start inside. And don't forget, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and go to whatcar.com to save money off your next new car. While many areas are nothing like a 3 Series, the interior very much is. Apart from this very slightly different, slightly sportier driving position, the dashboard, the layout, the infotainment system is very, very similar. In fact, identical to what you get in a 3 Series. But that familiarity definitely isn't a bad thing because you have a first-rate interior in the 3 Series in the Executive Saloon class. And shifting it across to the Coupe, this is, again, a properly brilliant interior. You've got wonderful materials all over the place, nice soft touch plastics where they need to be, really like this cream leather as well, just looks super nice. And it's not just the materials, it's the build quality that goes with it as well. So it's really such a feeling of solidity everywhere, so robust in here. So it's really, really first rate, as is the infotainment system. Now, every 4 Series gets a big 10.3 inch touchscreen with BMW's iDrive. And for ages we've said how good iDrive is and it continues to deliver in the 4 Series. So you can control it by touching the touchscreen. But the thing that really makes iDrive so great is the fact that not only does it have a really easy to understand operating system that's really intuitive, but you've also got this rotary dial down here. So you don't have to just be using the touchscreen to control it you can use a rotary dial, which is just so much easier, so much safer when you're driving. And it means you don't have to take your eyes off the road as much as you would for just using the touchscreen. So that is brilliant, as is the fact that you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, no matter what BMW you go for. Now, what you can do is go for the technology pack on the options list. And what that gives you is an upgraded stereo. And it also gives you gesture control, which is the thing that enables you to do all these ridiculous looking gestures to skip tracks or radio stations and turn up the volume. Now, it's been around in BMWs for quite a while. We tried it in loads of other BMWs, but we're yet to find it genuinely useful. So it's a bit hit and miss and really it's a bit of a gimmick. So if you're looking for absolute deal breakers on your 4 Series, the technology pack probably isn't it, unless you love it. And if you do, fair enough. But no mistake, this is a first rate interior. Now, no one buys a two-door coupe for practicality, but presumably you're going to need four seats and a usable boot every now and then. So getting into the back of the 4 Series is okay. You have got to squeeze through a relatively narrow gap behind the front seat, but it's no worse than it is in other coupes in this class either. And when you're back here, you have loads of legroom. It's really very generous in that respect, but clearly 
the problem because that nice sloping coupe roof line is headroom. Now it isn't terrible and a couple of six footers will still be able to sit back here relatively comfortably unless the journey is ridiculously long but clearly it's not quite so good as it is in the 3 Series and that's the compromise that you're making by going for this car. But it's still certainly very good back here compared to other cars in the class. Now, something to bear in mind is that apparently half of all previous 4 Series sales were for the Grand Coupe model. And that is very much like this, but with a couple of extra rear doors and more space in the back as well. It's not a huge amount, but it will be more generous than it is here. So if you really love this car, but you do want a little bit more practicality, then maybe it's worth holding on for one of those. The 4 Series has a slightly smaller boot than its two main rivals, the A5 and C-Class Coupe. There's still enough space for a set of golf clubs or a small pushchair though, and you can fold down the rear seats when you do need to carry longer loads. But now, here are five things to know about buying the BMW 4 Series. There really isn't much to separate the list price of an equivalently specced 4 Series, A5 and C-Class Coupe. You can though save money on all of them at whatcar.com. Just click on the link and go to our website. One thing that does separate it from those rivals is the fact that the 4 Series is predicted to hold onto its value better than both of them. For the most miles per gallon in the lineup, go for the diesel 420D, but it's this 420i which is the cheapest in the lineup, whether you're buying in cash or on a monthly PCP finance deal, and it's expected to hold onto its value better than the diesel as well. In our latest reliability survey, BMW finished 9th out of 31 manufacturers, which is above every other premium brand apart from Lexus. And if you buy a 4 Series, then you get a 3-year unlimited mileage warranty to go with it. The trim range kicks off with M Sport, and really, we'd stay there. You get plenty of kit as standard, like 18-inch alloys, leather seats which are heated in the front, cruise control, and climate control. Okay, so what's the 4 Series really like to drive? Well, we're in the entry-level 420i, and it gets 181 brake horsepower, it's rear-wheel drive, and it feels like a really nice fit for this car. It might be the entry-level option, but it's expected to be the biggest seller. And really, we can see why, because the engine might not be massively exciting, and it might not have really explosive acceleration, but it's certainly quick enough. And in a car like this, it's actually quite nice to wring out the engine and really make it work hard to make it feel properly brisk. So it's a really good, impressive engine and a nice fit for this car. There is, though, a very deeply impressive 420D, but obviously diesel power isn't particularly fashionable at the minute, so you may not be interested in that. But still, if you are, it's a very, very good engine. Punchy, smooth really frugal as well, obviously gives you a few more MPGs than this 420i. Now, not counting the M4, the current range-topping version of the 4 Series is the M440i, and it gets a 3.0-litre, six-cylinder petrol engine with 369 brake horsepower, and it is properly quick. Really explosive acceleration, makes it quicker than an S5, quicker than a C43 AMG, really is so quick, so it's capable, but it's smooth, and it's fun, and it's all-wheel drive as well, whereas this 420i is just rear-wheel drive. But the point to make here is that you don't have to go for those super quick versions of this car to get a really sweet handling 4 Series, because this 420i that we're in is a really, really nice thing. Now, every 4 Series gets variable steering, so that means at low speeds, you don't end up having to do excessive arm twirling to get it into a space, but at faster speeds, it means that even the slightest bit of steering input has quite a big say on the direction that the car's going. So it is very sensitive and it can take a bit of dialing into, but once you're there, it feels incredibly responsive and it's such a nice thing to drive quickly. And again, paired with this engine, so you do have to wring it out and really try and get the best from it. It's just such a nicely balanced thing. It really is very agile, very capable, and just really fun as well. And it's definitely more naturally confidence inspiring to drive and more fun and engaging than an A5 or a C-Class Coupe, certainly. But it's not all about the handling with the 4 Series because actually over long distances this is a really comfortable car as well. So it is firmer than a 3 Series but if you go for the adaptive M Sport suspension then it gives the car a really nice split personality. So put it in Sport and it hardens up, feels actually like quite a hardcore sports car, but really well tied down, really nicely controlled, and so flat through corners. But slacking everything off in comfort, 
and when you're on the motorway or even on these undulating roads here it's still got that level of control to stop it from bouncing all over the place but nicely smooths out all the bumps as well so it's really really impressive although from a ride comfort perspective the Audi A5 is just a little bit more comfortable overall and if you don't go for the adaptive M Sport suspension then the ride overall is firmer but still it is really impressive. Now not everyone is going to love how this car looks but you can love everything else about it because it's great to drive really smart inside and it's roomier than you might imagine as well so all round it's a properly fantastic coupe to save money on one go to whatcar.com if you've enjoyed this video give it a like make sure you tell us what you think of the car in the comments below and please do subscribe because we've got loads more new car reviews coming out every week